Hi guys. All right. I'm going to play this. You may have seen it. I don't know, but I don't even know what to say. I don't know what to say about this country anymore and the American people on the whole. I do not know what to say. Um, look, it, back in the early 80s when I was a young, young, young adult, I knew something was very off with this country, with the American people, that they were essentially, you know, full of shit. Even my friends, you know, everybody was, you know, into uh, how they looked, you know, their appearance, uh, material things, and, and the lies, you know, that were told and the pretense that they were living. Anybody who was real, they made fun of. I knew something was wrong. The gossip, the shallowness. I knew something was very wrong. And things didn't get better. They only got worse. Now we're living, certainly with the frequencies and all of the poisons that we're inundated with. Yes, that absolutely only makes matters worse. It kind of exaggerates all of the the uh, the really the, the qualities that are so low, you know, but oh God, how long, how long have I been listening to we're number one, we're the greatest, we're morally superior, we're this, we're that, and we're not. We haven't been, we're not, we're still not. We are going so in the upper opposite direction of ever, ever seeing that day. But how, how do you explain violence that has no cause, no reason? It, it's so disturbing. This country has significantly descended into like hell in a short amount of time and I'm going to play this now it is shocking it is uh, stunning it is imagine imagine yourself in the shoes of this man in the car Good evening. We're doing something unusual tonight, bringing you a report on police violence that took place in the city of Glendale in 2017. You will see it through the body camera of an officer who has been disciplined for significant abuse of the use of force. You will witness the entire event. Disciplined. He has been disciplined? Okay, watch this. How is it that this man has been disciplined? That he was not fired immediately, and thrown in jail himself. Just knowing that he was disciplined, it makes me feel repulsed. Because we are. That is only a reflection of how sick we are in this country. The story is uncomfortable to watch. If you have young children in the room or if you don't want to see violence in a real life situation, now would be a good time for you to leave this program. So why are we airing this story? Because the Valley, like many communities around the nation, is dealing with escalating incidents of violence by police officers and violence directed at police officers. Rarely do we see the entirety of what is occurring. Tonight, ABC 15 investigator Dave Biscuving brings you a story you'll see for the first time and only on ABC 15. In the parking lot of this Motel 6 in Glendale, police pull in How doing? and approach this car. You guys stay in here? The passenger is Johnny Weecroft. He's in the front with another man. In the back seat, you can see his 11-year-old son, his 6-year-old, and their mother. When you turn in here, man, just make sure you throw your turn signal on for us. Yeah, that's all it is. Man. Nobody has their ID on them? No. Anything with your name on it? Yeah, just grab it out real quick. 
Nothing in the car there should be, right, anybody? Nothing. It's July 27, 2017, and these officers are part of a special unit assigned to high crime areas. This is a reverse angle from the other officer's body camera. You're looking at Officer Matthew Schneider. You can just step out and hang out right there. Remember that name, because things with Schneider are about to escalate quickly. Uh, well, just hang on a minute, okay? Don't, re don't reach in your bag, man. Oh, okay, I'm sorry. He says you don't have no ID. I don't want no, you no, reaching no. in there. What's your name? Uh, why, are you, why am I in the ass? Well, you don't have ID, and then we well, made, we made it. Yeah, if you're a passenger in a vehicle, you yeah. need to have your ID. Why not? I have an ID. I don't want to give to you. I mean, I didn't know you were off. Okay, well, I could take you down to the station and fingerprint you. Because we made a traffic stop on the vehicle, brother. That's I it. Mean, I didn't know you were off. And remember... This is all because they didn't put on their blinker coming into a parking lot. We could do this one of two no, ways. Okay, relax for me. I'm, I'm going to relax. Listen. Listen to me. We're going to... Don't... Okay. I don't want you stuffing anything down in between the seat like you're doing. Relax. Keep your foot in there. Okay, stop, please. Here's the deal. You tense up, I'm gonna listen to me. Listen to me. Listen to me. Relax your arm, okay? Don't start listen. A couple of things. One, okay, you don't have no ID on you, okay? I'm trying to do this as easy as we can. You already done stuff something down in your backpack and you stuff something down in the seat. Okay, are you gonna fight or not? No, I'm not. Okay. We're gonna do this. Okay. I just watched you. No, you didn't, sir. Let's pause for a quick second. Notice here, the officer has been grabbing Wheatcroft's arm for the past 34 seconds. That's kept the seatbelt from sliding off, and that's going to be important. Okay. Listen. He's gonna fight, dude. No, not bro. I'm not fighting. Relax. Hey, I'm not. Don't pull away. Hey, get your taser out. I'm not. You are. I'm not. I promise you that. You got a taser on you right now. He's not. He's not. I'm not doing nothing, man. I'm not doing nothing, bro. I'll tell you right now. Continue, man. What the f wrong with you? Relax. I am. Dude, I'm stuck. I'm not getting out. handcuffed, still tangled in the seatbelt, wrapped around his legs. It's the 11-year-old boy who has to untangle his father as officers try to drag him away. Hey, get in front of the car right now. Get in front of the car. Come on. You're all right. Come on. You're all right, buddy. Come on. Officers claim the woman in the car hit an officer with a water bottle. Mark's hurt. Mark is hurt. He got hit in the head by her. We need to get her in handcuffs right now. She's in the seat too, please don't take my phone. Stop. 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 We need to play that back. If you missed it, with Weecroft handcuffed, another officer on his back, Schneider kicks him in the groin, then takes his left hand, pulls down Weecroft's shorts, and according to his lawsuit, tases him in the testicles from behind. And if you missed it, the video shows another officer pushing this woman down, and then seconds later, yelling at her too. 
and you're about to see Officer Schneider threaten another tase. This time, with Weecroft on his side, Schneider places the taser at the crease of his hip on his penis, according to the lawsuit. Keep fighting, you're gonna get it again! You want it again? Shut your mouth! I'm done f***ing around with you! Glendale arrested Weecroft and charged him with two counts of aggravated assault on a police officer. In all, records show Weecroft was tased 11 times. Shut up. Shut up. You're fine. Listen to me. Okay, well, you should have been stupid then. Watch your, watch your hand. He's got one right there. Hey, Bill. Right here. 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 Right Is this officer still on the force? Steve, he is still on the force. He was suspended for three days, and he is on patrol as we speak. He wrote a ticket as of two or three days ago. Was he ever ordered, to our knowledge, into counseling or anything like this? It, it seems, and the reason I ask this question, is it seems as if uh, once he's in handcuffs and on the ground, pulling down his shorts, tasing him in the groin, that almost seems vengeful. We haven't gotten a school personnel file yet, and it doesn't indicate any counseling or anything, but we spoke to some of the top law enforcement misconduct experts across the country, and they said they'd never seen anything like this. They called that one of the most sadistic things they've ever seen. They cannot believe he is still employed as an officer, and they can't believe that he wasn't prosecuted for what happened there. So what is Glendale's response to all this? Well, we reached out to them this morning for comments, yeah. right, about this lawsuit and to see what they had to say. Um, they answered a few basic questions, but didn't give us any comments about uh, the lawsuit. Instead, they released a media release to all media, didn't send it to us directly at first, with a long list of things that they claim happened in the video. And one of the things that they did say is that they're dedicated to remaining transparent. Now, as part of the transparency, they released just a 30-second video. I hope we have it here. I wonder if we can get that up on screen. Um, this video is from a surveillance vid uh, building, the Motel 6 there. And it shows just 30 seconds, and it shows no body camera video. And we know that there are dozens of minutes of video from those officers' body cameras. They had four or five officers there at one time. What you're seeing here is the one officer fall back after they claim he was hit in the head with a bag with the water bottle by the woman. And then you can't see Mr. Weecroft because he's in between the door and the car, which isn't facing us, being tased 11 times. So this is what they released, none of that officer's body cam video. What else do the experts say about this? You 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 flew to Los Angeles and yes. talked to some of the, the top experts in, in, in this arena. What did they have to say? Well, they said not a single tase in this incident was justified. Not a single one. And they also say that this whole incident was handled wrong. That the officer did not tell the truth when he said he had to provide an ID for a traffic stop in which he wasn't the driver. And that when he went hands-on with him right away, there was no reason to do that because he was not resisting. So the whole incident, from beginning to end, was entirely wrong, in their opinion. I, I know that the uh, the police department and the uh, attorney's office, Maricopa County Attorney's Office, looked into this. Uh, no charges recommended or filed for this officer? None. In fact, I think they had two looks at this incident, and they declined to prosecute both times, which is pretty stunning, at least according to the expert's opinion. Now, I do want to talk about this statement that Glendale Police released today. It's pretty long. It's two full pages. But... What it's stunning for is its omissions, and frankly, it's not truthful. And I can't really see this as any other than in any other than an attempt to mislead the public. I'll give you some highlights here. First, they claim that Mr. Weecroft was resisting the officer's hold, and that's very telling because I got a hold of the department's internal affairs investigation into this officer, which they suspended him for three days. And they specifically write the subject was compliant and didn't resist. That's a quote. And I'll read you another one. Based on the suspect's lack of resistance at the time of your use of force, the amount of force you used against the suspect was unreasonable and unnecessary. That is not in their statement. Neither is any information about his suspension 
for the fact that he was criminally investigated and referred to the county attorney's office. What also is missing is nothing about the seatbelt and being tangled in it. And they also wrote this, that this is a quote, Mr. Recroft was eventually able to be calmed down and he and the woman were taken into custody without further incident. Nothing about him pulling down Mr. Recroft's pants, applying the taser to his testicles. As Mr. Recroft yeah. claims, and you see, it's, it's, it's important, important to note the date on this too. If you look in the upper right-hand corner of the screen, there, July twenty-seventh, twenty seventeen. So this was a year and a half ago, correct? And it's only now uh, coming to light. Do many of the police at all say why they they haven't talked about this previously? I think it's because they weren't uh, questioned about it yet. So they talk about transparency, but this happened. It was significant. This is part of a federal lawsuit, as we told you about there. This isn't going to go away. And, and honestly, this response and the way they responded to this incident is probably only going to intensify the scrutiny. Dave, I know you'll stay on top of it, and uh, we're still looking to gather more information about this officer's background and uh, get some more answers. Um, what you d just saw is abuse and torture by a sadistic, psychopathic police officer in Arizona, in Glendale. This officer is walking the streets, driving the streets in Glendale. And every resident of Glendale needs to get rid of this guy because he is so sick and sadistic. That man sitting in the car, the passenger, did nothing wrong. Nothing. This country is unfortunately filled with people like this. And, you know, I, I feel like I'm just going to burst into tears. You know, this, this walking the low road, <laughs> which manifests with people who are just not doing anything, not caring, just sitting back, letting all of this take place. Everybody in Glendale should be marching down to that police off, that police department and demanding this guy not only get fired, but arrested. And they don't leave the police department building. They don't leave until that happens. It is so disgusting, repulsive, that these people, police officers in particular, they never ever suffer the consequences of their gross, violent, immoral behavior against innocent people. But even if they weren't innocent, gross, sadistic, immoral behavior, that doesn't happen unless that is what the individual is about. So, this guy doesn't suffer any consequences. There's going to be another victim. That's why it's important to get rid of these people. Hold them accountable. Get rid of them. The link is below. <laughs>